got Sean Mayer here from Quartix, and uh, Quartix are providers of telemetry and the data and insights that come from that data. And we know that local authorities are coming under increasing pressure to reduce their carbon footprint. What kind of things do they need to consider when they're looking to reduce their carbon footprint? Well, from our point of view, the thing we notice mostly from the, from the public sector is that they're looking to bring down things like uh, idling. Idling is a big issue in that, in that sector. Um, whereby the vehicle will be, will be sat, parked up with its engine running, it's costing them money, it's obviously a direct cost to their business for no apparent reason. There's a massive issue with carbon footprint. If your engine is idling, it's burning more fuel, it's obviously not being as efficient as it should be. So we do tend to find that when we go into local authority, one of the areas we focus on is reporting around their idling concerns. Leading off that, we're also looking at the way in which vehicles are being driven. Um, we tend to find that when you put vehicle telemet te telemetry into the, into the vehicles, uh, the information that you start to see is around the way in which those vehicles are being driven aggressively. So we're looking for people who are constantly heavy braking, heavy accelerating. And again, by virtue of where um, a lot of the public sector operate in, which is towns and cities, it tends to be that more aggressive driving tends to happen in those areas. Yeah. So if we can get them to reduce the way in which they're driving those vehicles and also plan ahead so they can see what the roads are doing, so they don't need to be putting their brakes on too late, they don't need to be accelerating into environments that may not deem to be safe, we find that by linking that together with the idling, we start to see a reduction in their fuel consumption. But the big thing for us, as I say, is looking at tying the, the idling into the driving performance. And bringing those two in together, typically you'll see a customer make quite decent savings on their fuel. And typically, a commercial vehicle will burn between a litre and a litre and a half of fuel for every hour that it's parked up. Good grief. Mm. So that leads me to think that perhaps there's opportunities identified by your data for moving to low emission, low carbon vehicles, electric vehicles? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have some of the public sector that we are already working with them where they are operating hybrid and electric. Um, but we're finding that in relation to budget constraints, those vehicles can be quite expensive. Mm. So we have customers that are historically are using diesel, know that they need to move to electric, but maybe the infrastructure and or the cost is, 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 prohibit is prohibiting them from being able to swap across. Yeah. So they know they need to and they know they want to. And what we're finding is that vehicles will be introduced slowly, but if we manage the, the diesel fleet and help them understand and identify where the, where the, where the uh, costs are coming from, then we're able to make them be more efficient when they're operating out and about whilst they're making that transition across to either mm. hybrid or to, the, or to the electrical fleet. Mm. And I suppose that that has an impact then in terms of what I know and you know as grey fleet miles. Mm. So the business travel that's undertaken by people using their own vehicles. Absolutely, yes. It's, a, it's the kind of hidden evil that nobody talks about. Tell us about grey fleet and how you can help. Okay, so grey fleet is always an issue because the, so somebody's going to use their own vehicle they're going to tell you how many miles that they've done and you obviously have to take their word for the amount of mileage that they've done and typically what happens is people tend to forget that what their mileage was at the start and the finish so they tend to go to the google mapping and they'll start to say well i've just done a journey i think that's 30 mile yeah. when in actual fact it may only be 25 or 26 yeah. or the other side of the coin they may not be claiming enough yes. but what we also need to ensure is that if they're utilizing their vehicle for business purposes they're able to separate their business mileage from their private mileage so we have a facility whereby when they're in, using their vehicle for business, they can actually uh, set the system to operate in what we call business mode. So it will be logging where they've been, showing the locations they visited, the routes they've taken to make sure they're taking the efficient route as well, because obviously what you don't want them doing is taking a longer route to add the mileages up. Yes. So the, the, the business can go back and review the journey, they can review the, the, the mileage that they've done. And then when the individual is using their vehicle for their own use, they have the ability to turn the system off, but just log mileage. So they're able to identify then at the end of the week or the month that this vehicle's done a thousand miles, of which we're declaring 300 of that is all done in business. And here's the evidence of what we've done to show that that was business, business mileage undertaken. Wow. So that works really well. And presumably you do all of the data analysis and, mm. and insight finding as well. So you help your clients to find out what it is they know. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the big point is that if we sell a tracking unit uh, or telematics system into a customer, we don't want it to become a white elephant. It needs to be used. You'll only get value from it if you use the data that's yeah. given to you. Yeah. So a lot of what we do is working around understanding what the customer requires and actually sending that to them in a, in a format that is either live or it's done through a, a scheduled reporting me mechanism. But we always want to sit down with the customer to identify what is it they need. A lot of companies will start telling you the benefit of having telematics. You can't actually understand the benefit until you know what the customer actually wants. Yes. So the first question we always ask is, what is it you want it to do? Yes. It might sound obvious when it's tracking, but people have different requirements. And then once we understand that requirement, we're able to allow them to take the product, 
get the data and for us to come back in, sit down and analyze with them and take it all to pieces and understand exactly what they're seeing. Yeah. And as I say, when you sit with a customer and say, do you realize that in the last month you've idled for 300 hours across your fleet? Normally their faces drop and it's thinking, wow, that's a huge, that's a huge amount of fuel. Yeah. There's an even bigger concern. You've got to assume the operative is in the vehicle while they're idling. Because yes. uh, if they're not, you've got an insurance problem. Yes. So, so there's a massive cost there yes. to the business. There's a potential risk there to the business. Absolutely right. And you help identify both of those things, where, which up until now, and without the benefit of your system, would go unnoticed. Absolutely correct. All you may notice is that your MPG is not that good. Yeah. But how would you identify it? You only can identify it by knowing what the vehicle's doing yes. to attain the MPG that it's, yes. that it's finally giving to you. Yes. Absolutely. Now, we're moving away from um, transport as a, as a society, and we're beginning to understand this thing called mobility as a service. Mm -hmm. And local authorities have their part to play in understanding how we travel around. Mm. But they don't really, do they? Uh, but there's a lot of local authorities who are quite blind to how people move around their geographical area. Absolutely. You can help with that, can't you? Yes. The first thing you do with any authority is you would set up geofencing to, uh, to ensure that vehicles are only operating in an area you would expect them to operate in. More and more as, as well as cities are starting to move towards costings to go into, in, into inner cities. So for example, obviously the London congestion zone, as we all know, I live in the Midlands and Birmingham is eventually going to move to the, uh, to, to, to the low emission zone as well. I think it's been moved back a wee bit. But we can identify with customers where vehicles are entering those zones and should they be entering them. And again, we can be reporting and alerting that a vehicle has gone to a particular location that you wouldn't expect to see it. The other important point is where you're operating a large fleet and you have different skill sets and also people of the same skill set, there tends to be a, 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 an element of sending somebody across town to do a job when somebody of the same skill set is already there. By utilising the telematics, you can say, right, OK, I've got a problem. I've got Dave in that area. We don't need to send Mike over there because Dave's already there. Mm. He's been on site an hour. He'll be finished soon. So we, so we can also reduce the journeys that they're doing and all the crisscrossing that they're doing across from, from one side of the city to the other or the town. Mm. Because again, you've got this real time view of where everybody is by their skill set and therefore bringing down the amount of mileage and, and again, cost to the business. Indeed. Just to finish up, I suppose everything comes down to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. How much money do you think you can save a client typically when they put your systems in? Yeah, I mean, we're in an industry where people will, will, will throw big figures at you, 25% off your yeah. fuel bill. I think, in fairness, for a local authority, the, the fuel element and the saving in fuel is never going to be dramatically high. We tend to see savings of between 7 and 10%, okay. which is good. Mm -hmm. But the big thing for us also is the efficiency of the vehicle. Yeah. You tend to find when it's tracked, people will actually do an eight hour day, they won't arrive slightly late and leave slightly early. So you'll also see the, the savings in efficiency and getting more for your money from the day to day running of the of the business. So fuel, definitely saving, but also time. Yeah, and I think that's the, the probably the best way to wrap this up is local authorities are under great pressure to have to do more with less. Correct. You can make that happen. Definitely, most definitely. Brilliant, thank you, Sean. No problem at all, thank you for your time.